Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 40 of Anime on Draft. My so name is funny. Mark, and I will be your host today, or for Yay. this episode. <laughs> yeah, first time hosting. <clears throat> yeah, first time, long listener. time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, Joke we got a good show. Die. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, of course, I'm always joined by the usual co-hosts and usual hosts of the show, Alec. Hello, everybody. Welcome hey. to episode 40. Woo, we made it. Anyways, we made it. Yeah. Londo and <laughs> Drew, you guys want to say hello? No. Hi. I'm really cool. tired. I want to say, what's up? <laughs> wow, dude. Right. Yeah, way to assume greetings. Yeah, way in to assume my greeting in 2018. <clears throat> you are free Jesus to have Christ. the greeting of your choice. But I will, I will applaud you, Mark. You did not forget who you were or who we were. Yeah. That was, yeah. that's, I had to keep that in mind. You know, yeah. I have to tell the people who I am. You know the struggle. You know the struggle now that you just want to get through it. And yeah, like every sometimes, week, every sometimes week you do Alex it starting. so often that you just, you're like, everybody knows who I am. Everybody knows who everybody else is. Let's just get into it. I'm just so excited every time I host. That's why. Don't judge me. You know, so that's how it is, pumped. man. It's excited. Pump. Excited for the show. So. <gasps> <laughs> All right, so let, let's get into it. So uh, we we have a beer of the week who's picked by Drew. Um, we have a uh, porter for the week. We also got some uh, more it's Violet Evergarden day. Ancient Magus Bride we're going to go over, just touch upon. And then uh, we got some uh, anime and game news for later on in the episode. So uh, let's move right into the pairing, shall we? Mm. Yeah, do it. Pairing this week. Drew, you want to introduce this one? Yeah, I didn't pick an IPA, you bitches. I know, I'm so excited. Dude, I, I knew you were picking, and I was like, God, what IPA do I have to drink this week? <laughs> That's what I have in the notes. I bet it's an IPA. That was going to be the name of the episode. <laughs> it is not. I got it's you not. guys. That should be the name anyways, though. I bet it's an IPA, and it's not. <laughs> All right, that's the name. There we go. We, Decided. we got the we name. It. But yeah, <laughs> I picked uh, Deschutes uh, Black Butte, but no, it was Black Butte Porter. Um, I like Deschutes uh, as a brewery. I believe they're, I don't think they're Portland, but I know they're Oregon based. Um, they might be Portland. I know they, they are in Oregon, yeah. I, it's for they sure Oregon. Oregon. I, I want to say they're not Portland, but I, I don't, I don't know. Um, they're tired. from Deschutes, Oregon. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> there, there you go. Um, they make good beer. Um, they make good IPAs, but, uh. I don't know. I wanted to be nice and pick a porter, and a porter kind of sounded good. Um, and this one is good because um, I've had a few sips already. I cheated. Oh, uh, yeah. So Deschutes Brewery is a craft brewery founded in 1988 as a brew pub in Bend, Oregon, USA. There, there you go. go. Bend. Bend, Oregon. <clears throat> Bend, Bend, Oregon. Portland. Bend over Oregon. What? What? Yes. So <laughs> as we dwell on that for way too long, <laughs> moment of silence for that. Moment Drink of silence beer. for Alex. Terrible joke. <laughs> Drink, Drink your beer. All right. Let's Mom let's have a, a smell and a taste <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. It smells like you got the coffee. Definitely. The coffee scent for sure. Um, Very sweet. Chocolate. Smell. Yeah. yeah. Smells like chocolatey. Caramely. Mm hmm. Um, it smells like it's going to be roasty, um, more so than toasty, like a little uh, well, heavier on the burnt. It is roasty. I just took All a right. sip. So it's yeah, roasty. Definitely roasty. The I head like is that, a like, dark coffee chocolate. Color. Lots of this coffee smell for sure. Mm -hmm. It's got a similar flavor profile to the uh, that Sam Smith order. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that was a pretty a light style. beer, like no, in terms of the mouthfeel. Yeah, it's very it's very light. Reminds me of drinking a Guinness, a little bit heavier than a Guinness, but still not like super. It reminds dark, me of the heavy. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of that same watery, uh, mm -hmm. like not that Guinness is watery, but that watery yeah. component to it, where it's real like 
smooth light. Yeah, for how dark this beer pours out, like mm -hmm. the, I can't even see through the glass. Even when I hold it up to the light, you can barely see like a tinge mm -hmm. of like chocolatey brown. Yeah, but I mean, it's really brown. not that like thick and heavy. I don't know. I'm kind of surprised. I think that's like I a, expected this to go ahead. Go, no, you go ahead. I was expecting it to be more in taste or like a mouthfeel and heaviness to the either the Zumbar or the um, the uh, peanut butter, the Belching Beaver, based off of how it looks and smells. Yeah. Um, the the mouthfeel is very um, fizzy and mm -hmm. like surprisingly, um, like you said, it's not very like thick or filling. It's kind of um, similar to the feeling you have when you drink Guinness where it's um, Guinness is obviously not as heavy of a mouthfeel, but it yeah. doesn't feel very um, stout like, I guess because right. it's, it's, it's a porter. But <laughs> I mean, they do have similar <laughs> qualities like between they, them. But yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like the color, the roastiness, flavor profiles both of them tend to use chocolate and coffee a lot but porters are more of like a dessert beer so that's probably why they tend to be lighter because if you're going to have something for dessert you just ate a full meal so why do you want something that is essentially a full meal in a glass if you're if you just ate <laughs> right it's also like really common to have coffee with with dessert too so i think that's mm -hmm. also why like the porters tend to have that like heavier coffee smell yeah, just because right. it helps you draw out those flavors of you know whatever dessert you're eating, like you know, cake or ice cream or something, you know, something simple like that. Mm -hmm. I think um, this would be good with like cream cheese frosting. Just, cheese just, the frosting. just the frosting. <laughs> just the frosting. Just gonna Fucking take spoonfuls of frosting. <laughs> Dip a spoonful of frosting, frosting in the porter. D yeah, leave the red velvet cake off to the side. Give me the goddamn cream cheese <laughs> yeah. frosting. That's right. That That's cheese right. and uh, sugar, just give me it. That is a little extreme. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, we got a Rolando. Do you want to start us off? I mean, you're you're going on pretty good there. Do you want to start us off with a rating for this? Um, food, food. This is pretty good. I I like it. It's not the best porter I've had, but it's also very solid. I would definitely get this again. It's also very cheap. It's like yeah, eight no kidding. or nine bucks for a six pack. And yeah, I didn't want you guys to pay eighteen thousand dollars yeah, for, for a, a six, six pack, pack this time. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, it was half the price essentially for me as the as the last six pack. I then guess, again, it seriously. is half the alcohol content. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I if I wanted something more desserty and you know, not as filling like I would if like Alec has mentioned before with Guinness. I would definitely get this again. I'm going to give it a four. Giving it a four. Mm. All right. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Alec, you want to step up to the plate and give this a rating? Oh, man, here comes that home run. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Um, you're, you're like the uh, <laughs> resident porter connoisseur, I feel. And porter I'm the stout and guy, the but stout I do guy. love porters as well. Um <laughs> So I actually, I, I wanted to mention something. I actually, I, I saw a <clears throat> a recipe for how to cook a steak recently. And you take ground coffee and um, smoked chili and you make a dry rub on the steak and then you cook it, obviously. Um, Sounds good. I think that would be Sounds really good. good with this beer. I've I know it's not beer. like dessert, but I think it would be good. So, Sounds yeah. excellent. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So rating wise, um, do you four. have one? Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> I think a four is good. I think, do you I think four is solid. Uh, it's, it's light. So as a porter, it's not super heavy. I could have a couple of these cause it's not going to be super filling. Um, the flavor profile is good. I would say that it is probably a better flavor than, than Guinness. Um, but if I'm at a bar and I'm trying to just drink a lot, I'm still going to go with Guinness over this just because of the be fact the that price. Guinness is essentially a light <laughs> beer and yeah, like $3 for a pint. So, um, but all in all, I think it's a solid beer to shoots, to shoots did a good job. So four. 
<clears throat> all right, all right. Solid four. Cool. Well, uh, Drew, do you want to do you want to go next? You want me to go? I'll go. Um, let's keep this party rolling with fours. Um, oh yeah, man, that's what mm. uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, Bam! Wow. It's it's wow. it's good. Um, really enjoyed the mouthfeel. I like this better than Guinness. Um, it's you know it it does kind of remind me of that oatmeal stout that Rolando mentioned earlier, um, but maybe like a little bit sweeter. Um, as I'm drinking it more, I get a little bit of the bitterness kind of lingering in my mouth. Um, but other than that, you know, it's a good easy drinking beer that I I think I would go well with <clears throat> dessert. Um, or I I like the idea of the steak that you mentioned. Or maybe even like a mole, like a mole sauce would go good with this. Um, similar elements. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So some Mexican. Um, I I like just about everything Deschutes does. I I haven't had a beer um, that they do that I disliked. Um, it's kind of why you're a big chose Oregon brewery fan. Yeah, boy. I do. I do like. <laughs> I, I like the Oregon the Oregon brews. Um, they're they're good. Um, they are good. I agree. I look up Widmere, Henry Weinhardt, Deschutes, um, mm-hmm. Fat Tire. You know, the ton There's of a lot them. of them. They're good. Yeah. Drink them. Four. <clears throat> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drink them. Uh, it's good. All right. So fours all around, man. I. You know what? We, before we even started the rating, I was already thinking like i'm probably gonna give this a four. <laughs> oh, really i think this is no, our first unanimous really? vote that we've ever yeah, had no kidding i was really yeah. i was like this is a really solid beer like i'm gonna give it like a four i don't know yes. four point four point two wow. five four definitely um <laughs> I, I think i don't know i feel like i would rate it a little bit higher if it was i don't know i was almost wanted it like to be a little bit sweeter Mm-hmm. Um, as a porter, think, yeah, yeah, just as a porter, because uh, I, I mean, earlier I drank a smoked porter, and that had that like smoky but like kind of heavy flavoring, more of a toasty, yeah, versus roasty, it, right? Right, right, and it was it was definitely more of like a dessert beer, that's for sure. Um, but I feel like I mean, this is still a really good beer. I, I don't know, I'm actually really impressed. I wasn't I was kind of <clears throat> concerned because I mean, I see this beer everywhere. And I kind of thought yeah, it was like, yeah, I wasn't sure what people thought about it. So <laughs> I guess I understand. I can see why it's everywhere. So yeah. definitely a four what, for me. What beer did, or what smoked tree. porter did you have? Um, I actually don't know how to pronounce it, but it's uh, the uh, Amagang. Amagang? Amagang. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Amagang smoked porter. It's pretty good. Amagang is a solid brewery too. Definitely. So. Yeah, but is it from Oregon? It is. I don't know where I'm getting not from. from Oregon. It's from Just in case anyone's Cooper's curious, Town, we, New York. we talk about toasty and roasty. The way my teacher way back when described it is toasty is like toast that has been or sorry, bread that has been toasted it's like just toast right. Been toasted. And it's and it's like that light brown. And then you eat it like that. Uh, roasty is when it's you, you toast it a little bit farther and it's kind of like got that the much darker toast or black toast at the end it's that flavor so it's the difference between <clears throat> lightly toasted and heavily toasted bread yeah but what if there. you put butter on the bread it's still gonna have the um, same i mean components. Just that does butter. not change that <laughs> it's just roasted <laughs> buttered toast or toasted buttered toast yeah, but right. our but- pumpkins melons Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> what if you added oh my what God. if you added some black butt or yeah. however you black pronounce this but- fucking black butter. Black black but- Boote. Booter. Black boote. Black booter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't, let's, I don't let's, even know. <laughs> let's move on yeah. from trying to force some jokes now. <laughs> or I don't know about forced. Are you trying to make a um, joke out of Oregon? Yeah, this is made out of Oregon. Wow, dude. All the people in Oregon hate you. Yeah. You're really not doing it justice. I lived there for five years. They kicked me out. I mean, I can see why you were making fun of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to uh, the pairing that goes along with this. We actually wanted to 
touch upon both, right? I mean, we kind of wanted to speak a little bit about Violet Evergarden since uh, episode four came out earlier in the week and uh, Ancient Mage's Bride we haven't touched on in a little bit and uh, episode 17 just aired. So uh, let's start with uh, Violet Evergarden. Um, what did you think about this episode? Uh, I know this is one where we get to see more of a different um, different character part of the cast, uh, Iris, who is another one of the uh, auto-memoir dolls. We go to see her hometown and um, get to kind of learn more about you know, somebody else that's part of the company. Um, Side Rwanda, note. What a, what's that? Side note. Alec, Side note. Do you know who mm. voices Iris? No, who? Your favorite female voice actress. Oh, the same one who does Asuna? Yes. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, she does do a good job. <laughs> Just wanted yeah. to point that out. Nice. <laughs> I don't like. I don't pay attention, but I a I liked her. I thought she did. A, I thought the 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 character is voiced very well. So boom, there yeah, you go. Yelling and crying and being a bitch. You know, great yeah, job, lots dude. of lots of crying. Dude, <laughs> I think it's excellent. I think she's portraying the character very well in each scene. This show yes. I love. Okay, I think all the characters are portrayed very well, and it's excellent. Correct. Correct. Yes. Boom. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Especially the ending on this one. The ending had the feels, guys. Yeah, just flowers. So you felt flowers it. are important. Flowers are important. Um, yeah. What was the What was the line? Uh, don't be was... a tool. Be someone <laughs> that matches with their name. I kind of not gonna lie. I kind of laughed at first. <laughs> I was like, what? I just thought of a, an inside joke pertaining to our friend Jeff. Just now, <laughs> oh, that we okay. will not Don't, mention. Yeah, that's we will not mention. Not um, that's not appropriate. And that is why I'm laughing so hard. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. let's let's move on. Let's let's yeah, yeah let's move on. Okay, so anyways, let's that was a, it was a really nice touching quote. But uh, <laughs> was, way to ruin what it. What was the quote? No, the quote just was. <laughs> Don't be no, a tool. you said it wrong. It wasn't Dude. don't be a tool. Is that it, that it was, is what it is. I have I it, it was, in my notes. You won't be a tool. Yeah. No, in my notes it says don't be a tool. Become someone that matches with their name. That's the episode title. That is what it was. <laughs> the way Mark said it just sounded so. It's because needy. he said, "Don't, don't be a know. tool." <laughs> yeah, I kind of paused. <laughs> like I said, I just kind of laughed. I thought it was funny at first, but then I was like, "Oh, you know, that's really nice." <laughs> oh man! I mean, the like I said, it's. Yeah. I don't know. The, I feel like this episode is like it's it's so well done. Like the animation is beautiful, but sometimes Always. the story just kind of. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't touch me. <laughs> It doesn't touch you. It doesn't touch me as often. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> it's not connecting. Was with it Mark. this episode it's that not didn't connecting. connect to you? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's not connecting with me. Was it this episode or previous episodes? Uh, In general, maybe previous episodes. I think maybe previous episodes. I think this episode was was nice. But Wait. I mean, like I said, I still want to know more about the major and mm-hmm. Violet rather than the okay. other characters because I I kind of just didn't care about <clears throat> the other characters initially. So wow, I'm bro. I'm going to voice my opinion about it <laughs> and it. the way they're going about it is so the kind of technique they're using to develop Violet is yeah, is through the other characters is through the other characters because right, right. She, I get that. each episode is kind of like its own contained story in mm-hmm. which she learns something and eventually <clears throat> grows. And then we get just like that little glimpse of development and knowledge and information between her and Gilbert. So like at the end of this episode, we find out how Violet gets her name and it's relevant because rather than just showing it to you, we find out all of this information about Violet, which in turn shows us a little bit more growth from Violet herself. Um, Did I say Violet or Iris before? I don't you remember. Said you, you meant yeah. uh, Iris. I meant to say Iris. Yeah, you meant Iris. Um, yeah. And in the end, we find out how Iris is named, and that is what let lets us see this moment with Violet and Gilbert and her getting her name. And it's pretty relevant, seeing as three of our characters have names that are named after flowers. So there's right, right. Catelia, you know, the, the flirty chick with big boobs. Um, <laughs> Violet and Iris. So, like, I did research their names. I don't want to go in depth on that, but they do have a lot to do with their characters. So, in a shot, 
we'll talk about shot. that in the shot. Yeah, sure. No, yeah. like I, I totally get that. I mean, I understand. I just felt like I wanted to like it to linger on more between that moment. Like I feel like it was it wasn't enough that it was right at the end of the episode and it was like, oh, man, that was cool. But then it's like, well, not only not only do we get uh, that, but we also <laughs> get like more insight on the word like I love you. Um, Iris is kind yep. of shut down by um, her childhood his, friend. Yeah, childhood friend. That guy. Iman. Iman, yeah, she, he, Iman. he shuts her down. I only see you as a friend, um, even though she said, I love you. And that and that kind of like goes to Violet. And she's like, well, can I have multiple meetings? What did he, what did the major mean when he said it? Does it have to do with the situation? You know, all these different uh, ideals. So I, I thought that was really important. Um, also, one thing I wanted to touch on as well, uh, we kind of talked about it last week. But uh, Rolando, you mentioned last week showing um, Violet becoming more human, not like ripping her gloves off with her teeth. Um, this time when uh, Violet uh, comes into the town with Iris, instead of saluting the clientele, she curtsies. Um, yeah. Yes. You know, much more, much more ladylike uh, in this sense. She still has the very formal speech. Um, that hasn't changed much, but she's also able to coherently write letters now, which is good. And then just showing, you know, more feminine traits by curtsying. Um, that was a big development for her as well. <clears throat> I think another another thing that you kind of see her development is the scene when she finishes uh, mailing or delivering the letters with the postman. She sees the scenery. And she doesn't really know why, but it strikes her as something special. I think that's another yeah. pretty powerful scene as well. Um, I'm curious when I was watching this, I don't know if we'll ever get it. I was actually curious to see what she wrote to Iman for um, Iris, if they ever tell us. But that'd be interesting to see. What I do like about this episode <clears throat> is they've kind of been doing a similar thing in the previous episodes. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. driving fast. They, they do Race that. Cars. They, yeah, that's what they're doing. They're doing NASCAR driving in the episode. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but in the I, previous I'm episode, just... <laughs> they had like the parallels and there's like the like parallel scenes that are slightly different. And in this yeah. episode, there's Iris arriving in town, stepping into a puddle. She just lets it get to her and is like, you know, she's that type of person that it's just like wants to be perfectionist and mm -hmm. everyone to see her in like her perfect light. Whereas at the end of the episode, she steps into the puddle and then, you know, it's just like, you know, I'm not going to let this ruin my day. And it kind of just that little change in her attitude shows like the growth, like is an example of the growth that she has throughout that episode in itself where she kind of is learning to accept her position, accept where she is and not kind of because she's essentially like a peacock, right? She's very showy yeah. and wants yeah. everyone to think that she's got like the most popular auto memory doll service that everyone wants and is super attractive to everybody. But in reality, she's still struggling to, I guess, accept herself because she's like, she got rejected. She's pretty young. Right. <clears throat> like she's pretty like she used that kind of a like running away to the city and becoming a memory doll to kind of run away from her childhood friend that <laughs> she clearly yeah. is still and then hung she's up She's getting on. rejected as an auto memory doll too. Yeah. Because, or auto memoir doll, whatever, because of big booby girl, because yeah, cause she also she's clearly just better at it and. I more, mean, if I were a guy, I would more ask for her, yeah. too. Let's be real. <laughs> like, <laughs> if I need, I'm like, I can't write. Who am I going to ask to write my shit? Someone who I can enjoy the, <laughs> the time I'm with. Anyways, <laughs> um, so the uh, that flashback scene, too, was like perfectly done. I thought it was amazing. That transition where Iris is like uh, sitting there and then you see it like slowly transition, like fade into the past. And then when she says, like, the I love you, I thought that was pretty awesome. It was, yeah. It's amazing. The music under that scene was really good. Is I that thought, something out of Zelda? I, I thought, actually, the music that went throughout that and kind of ended in 
you know, while Iris and Violet were talking was similar mm-hmm. to the score from, I think I'm thinking of <clears throat> Deadwood, that HBO series, the Western series. But it, I could oh, I've also seen just, that. I don't know the score well enough to say though. I could also just be thinking of like True Grit or, you know, like just one of those <laughs> like, just westerns because the, the, westerns. the instrumentation and the way they kind of the melody goes is kind of westerny i don't know if they just were going for that or if they were trying to make it sound like it was you know european or something but it just sounded a little bit westerny to me it's my i guess i could see that definitely all right so uh i guess we'll kind of move on a little bit and we want to touch upon uh ancient magus bride i know we haven't hit that uh, uh series in a few weeks so 16 and 17, yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, so 16 and 17 have aired during the meantime. And this was the Christmas episode as well as, I guess, post-Christmas. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chise plays a sort of cruel game with Ash and I. So, um, Alec, do you want to do you wanna start this off and kind of just go over, like, in some initial impressions, what you've thought about the past few <laughs> episodes? And I guess we'll we'll try to still catch everything up in a, in a shots format and go more into depth with that later. Um, so uh, sure I could start. Um, uh, I'm try- I remember this week's episode much better than last week's. And then I remember the, there's, I remember the, the manga better. The, the one thing I do like is that they are keeping this story with the, well, wait, who, who has seen episode 17? Have we all seen episode 17? I mean, you better yes. have. Yes. Okay. So I'm glad they kept the the story with the brother and the sister in um, when you when you read it and you watch it, it kind of seems like filler. But the the things that like you can see Chise learning from from the experience with Ash and I and with the, the children is it, it isn't really filler. It definitely like cre- creates growth for Chise and Elias. Um, the Christmas episode is the one where she hangs out with Alice. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, there is, there, there are some things missing from that, that were in the manga that make it easier to understand, I guess from in the anime, they explain a couple things better because they have the, the old gods and all that, but they get the point across very well. Um, the one thing I really liked about all these episodes is they kept the, the lore that is involved in the manga in the anime very well. Like I remember talking with you, Rolando, you were said after you watched 16, you went into all the lore for all the different stuff for. Yeah. I looked up like the tradition from both Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Celtic stuff, Norse stuff just in general. And so I find it, I I found that episode 16 was really great for all that background information that they kept in it without overloading the episode. So I thought it was very good. Um, The backstory with Alice was much needed um i just the the side characters in this show are just as important as the main characters so that's kind of my impressions of the two episodes um without going crazy with (laughs) with it (laughs) yeah i mean this like you said like the side characters are just as well done as like um you know chise or uh I guess, I don't know, as some Elias of the main characters, and, Elias, yeah, I mean, you mm-hmm. really get a lot out of these side characters, and I don't know, it's really interesting. It's like but, a whole bunch of main characters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. even the kids, too. Yeah. The one other thing I want to mention, as I go behind my microphone, yeah. <laughs> as you um, is like, oh, he's leaving. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> goodbye, everyone. The one and other the, thing I want to mention there goes Alex. is the score in episode 17 was just excellent the way they made you feel like the The tension i don't know if i would call it dread but yeah the tension with the with the piano and Mm -hmm. everything was oh i loved it i was so i was really interested to see how they would do it from like the manga to the anime and i think they did an excellent job so yeah that's kind of like a (laughs) um like a technique that's employed um i don't know the exact term for it but it's like a chaotic um type of scoring where it's very Di- um, it's dystonic. I want like I don't remember the actual term. It's been a while, but there's no specific key or melody to it. They just purposely throw chaos into it. Um, like just random notes, 
sporadic, all of that. And that's kind of what they do a lot in horror. And is it that is it the same as that that um, shoot what where they keep going up and up and up and they have four tones that keep going with each other. It sounds like it's going up and up forever, but it's not. It's just going fluctuating between or something. I can't remember what that's called either, but I remember <laughs> yeah, reading about that. I don't, you know what I'm talking our, about? Our music it, theory knowledge, yeah. guys. <laughs> it, it's not, uh, it's, it's not like important to know the term, but I know what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. But it's that type of um, scoring really? where it's not melodic. It's mm-hmm. purposely going out of or out of the normal order um, of, I guess, contemporary music to kind of instill some sort of uneasiness in people because that's not what they're used to hearing. Right. Right. I mean, especially in that episode 17, I mean, you're, you can feel the tension and like the like sense of like kind of dread that you, that she say and the kids are feeling. Yeah. Um, just because of the music is in the score is amazing. Um, Ash and Drew, I, he, yeah, yeah. Ash and I is, is yeah, kind of a, he's a creepy shit. motherfucker. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> he's a trickster. That's who, that's who I wanted to talk about. He's he's such a cool like. He's not even a villain. He's like chaotic neutral, and he fits that role like so well. Like he has his own agenda, and he likes causing chaos because it's funny to him, and it's not good or bad chaos because no one in the end ever really gets hurt. Like he's teaching them a lesson because it's like funny to him. So I think I, he's like a super cool character. Um, also, it, his eyes look like the Rinnegan from uh, Naruto. <laughs> yeah. From Naruto, yeah, no. he's, but he's got three of them, dude. Yeah, he's, he's got, got three, three. He's so powerful. Three Rinnegan, dude. He's he's all powerful. Like, watch <laughs> out, Madara. Like, you, you got nothing on this guy. I yeah, I like how <laughs> even even Elias is like, I hate these old beings. They're way too exactly. powerful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and they're annoying. Yeah. I was gonna mention that annoying. dude's like, I hate these shit. He says the same thing in the manga. It's just I hate old creatures. <laughs> yeah, he's he's super cool. I really like him. Also, fuck Ethan and Stella. They're annoying. Um, what? Oh I God. thought you uh, say everyone's annoying. Yeah, <laughs> well, they were. You hate everyone except Ash and I. <laughs> yeah, Ash and I is the only cool character. Uh, no, but I mean they were annoying. I, like you said, Alec. I thought this was like a filler episode, and it's like I I understand the point, and it what? was like good development. Um, what you said. Well, <laughs> I said it seems like it, seems but it's like, not seems like it. I mean, it, it, it did like when I was watching this, I'm like, this, like, okay, all right, like, whatever. But because I didn't like the kids, but maybe it's just because mm-hmm. I don't like kids. But uh, it's keep interesting watching. because, like, that's kind of how the series is going. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's bringing sure. in these, like, smaller stories to, to have this, like, overarching theme. But I guess. which was better, these annoying little shits. Or the cat kingdom, which was totally random, and then people exploding into blood pools. Like, mm-hmm. that was much cooler than whining, crying, sniveling little kids. Also, yeah, Alice's think, backstory but, was really cool, too. Like, oh, it's like this drug addict kid who has, like, an affinity for sorcery. Like, that was cool. But, like, sniveling little kids who, like, argue with each other and doesn't know the importance of, like, words... And it's like, yeah, you lose you lose your brother because of that, like idiot. That's the point, though. <laughs> yeah, I think it was an important lesson. It's like a it's like a Aesop tale. Yeah. Well, I'm not it's saying it, it, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying it was annoying. Like I I've liked all the other sub stories much better than this particular one. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could see how it was annoying just because the kids were like denying it. You know, they were they were both. Like yeah, how, how are you about to go from like crying my brother's gone and then finding him and being like i will actually wait a second i don't actually <laughs> really like you like shut up <laughs> you're like they're like 12 <laughs> by the way yeah but i think that's the thing <laughs> 12, <laughs> by the way. Like 12 by the way dude. 12, 13, by the 13 way. in may <laughs> no longer 11 13 in may you guessed it i'm 12 by the way okay well <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole meme if you wanted to know it <laughs> yeah that that's a, it's a i felt the need meme. to say it okay for our listeners i'd let you finish it thank you <laughs> all right thank kanye you. i appreciate it all right man. kanye i am let you finish but uh <laughs> let's let's save that for uh, another shot if we have more to talk about for uh ancient mages bide we'll definitely we'll definitely cover more in a shot <laughs> so be on the lookout for that so with that, let's move on to our happy hour and let's uh, let's catch up on some other shows. Long Actually, weekly pairing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we got a lot to talk about, you know. Yeah. But um, I, I've I've had a question for Alec. Are you still watching Black Clover? I am. Yeah. Has it gotten any better? 
so I think they toned down his yelling voice significantly because he does yell and it does get to the same grading point as it did originally, but it's less often and the the volume has been reduced, I think. <laughs> so I think they told the guys you need to yell a little quieter and um all that. But I actually went and because I actually kind of liked the story when it first started. So yeah. I said, fuck it. I'm going to go read it. So I went and I read it and um, they do not do good by the manga. I don't think it's a good adaptation. Um, yeah, they throw in a it. bunch of random stuff. No, I definitely agree because I'm actually you read it too? reading the manga right now. I'm I'm caught up to the latest uh, to the latest. What's um, the latest? Chapters. Is it? Um, it's pretty far. I think there's like I, I want to say there's over 100 chapters. Um, How many but, books are there? I've read eight books that I'm not sure or seven books or something. Uh, there's 143 chapters. Jesus released. Christ. Then I'm, yeah. I'm a little you're behind. you're probably like halfway through that. Yeah. Yeah. The the anime right now is probably maybe like 20 chapters in. Because uh, yeah. the reason why I wanted to ask, because the current arc that it's on, like this uh, dungeon that they're at, was exactly mm -hmm. when I started reading into the manga because I, I had picked it up when mm -hmm. it first aired or when it first released. And the dungeon and is it. super bad. Yeah, and, and then I From dropped the it. the manga? And then, no, I mean, the, the dungeon was a little bit better. It was, like, a little bit better done. Like, the story was, like, actually in the anime? moving. No, 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 in the manga. Oh, no, I mean, the the anime dungeon compared to the manga dungeon is terrible. Yeah, it's it's way different. It's, it's so awful. that's why I was curious as if I should, you know, start picking it back up again and maybe watch, because, I mean, uh, I, uh, I enjoy the manga. I mean, I like the, I liked the manga. Uh, the only reason I'm watching the anime is because... I don't know. It's shown in and it's kind of just bleh fun to watch. <laughs> um, but if you want to watch it because you like the manga, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think they do a good job of adapting from the manga to this anime. They, they add in random crap and they try to add parts that are in. So, you know how there's antics with like, um, Noel and, um, God, what's his name? Asta. The main, Asta. Yeah. Asta. Black Asta. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, they have like antics between him and her or like him and other people. They try to throw those in in the anime, just randomly cut to it, have the antic and then go back to something serious. And in the anime, it makes zero sense. In yeah. the manga, it makes more sense with how they do it. But it, they're just like, hey, look, they find this chest. It's full of organs. OK, let's go back to fighting. It's like, what the yeah. fuck are you doing? Like, it always seems forced stupid. in the anime. Like, it just seems really way forced. too forced. And in the manga, it's a little bit easier to do because you can have, like, smaller panels mm -hmm. with, like, you know, mm -hmm. cheesier jokes or something. And that's yeah. a little easy to just kind of go over really quick. I would say but, continue reading the manga. Don't pick up the anime. Interesting. All right. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so anything else that you guys are covering right now that you guys are watching that you feel you want to talk about? Uh, I know some of the ones that we have here are uh, Yuru Camp, which is uh, still great to watch. Uh, Place it's Further Than the Universe watch. and uh, Hakata Tonkatsu Romans. Anybody want to talk about any either either of those? Um, um, I, I like gonna... eating in laid back camp or Yuru Camp. Good time to eat. I was going to mention uh, one that's not on the list. It's uh, the Ryu's work is never done. Um, they added another lolly playing shogi player, and that's creating conflict. Um, the main character is also being portrayed as like this perverted lolly con. So if you are into that, um, you know, that is uh, definitely. Watch don't Definitely watch it. Don't watch it for the shogi. It doesn't explain anything about shogi. It's just about <laughs> about little girls like playing shogi. <laughs> Do they have magical powers? Uh, not yet. I mean, not yet. I mean, they they might like this one. The new girl like plays like this old man slash woman that we don't know who it is, and then like it turns out it's like a really ugly woman, and then the little girl <laughs> loses because of that. So. Is this is this by like the same author of that Rokubu anime? The like fucking elementary school girls playing basketball. I mean, probably. One? Is it? It seems like that. Just like why is there rant? Just like it's, why are we supposed like, to care about these little girls? It's 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 not bad. Like the animation quality and character design is good, and it's like kind of funny. There's like funny moments in it, but it's like in terms of like having like an actual story, it's like really stupid. <laughs> 
<laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, is, it it. is it a comedy? Is it a comedy or is it like an actual just it's, it's kind of like, like slice of life? Sh- it's like shonen slash comedy slash tournament arc slash <laughs> slash tournament arc. Oh wait, wait a minute. Who, now we're talking. Who knows? <laughs> they, if this was done by was it Studio Gokumi, the ones that did uh, Saki, then it would probably just be all fucking magical shonen powers. Sitting at a go table, a shogi yeah, table. Sitting at a shogi ta- <laughs> table, like I use my secret eye of the dragon. <laughs> that would be I badass. Love, that, what, was, what, what was the show? What was the show? The shogi cho. Uh, shogi cho. Shogi cho. Songatsu no lion. Yeah. No. The um. The other one. The uh. Oh, not. Sh- um. Not shogi. The um. Fuck. What? The. Shogi. No, what not that. The, the the four four player game. Mahjong. Um Mahjong. Mahjong. What's yeah, the Mahjong Saki. game? Saki. Oh, Saki. Yep, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> For some reason I heard you say that and was thinking Shogi and I thought you were talking about something completely oh. different. <laughs> okay, so anyways, anyways, yeah. Okay. Move on. Please move on. Okay, please moving move on. on. Yeah, well, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That's interesting. I I don't know if I'll pick it up because it sounds kind of crazy. But I, you know, what I did pick up is uh, Hakata Tonkatsu Ramens. Yeah. Uh, I watched the first two episodes. It does start out pretty slow, and it's kind of a uh, kind of a drag to to start uh, right in the beginning. But uh, I think that's it's interesting. a terrible way to start a show. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> not actually lie, very though. bad. Like, it's, like you want to start lie. exciting and then get boring. <laughs> like the first episode was, it was kind of a pain to get through, and then the yeah. second episode was a little bit better. There's, I feel like so many it's going somewhere is the problem. That was a, exactly the problem. Like there was just so many names and people that were just thrown in. I was kind of overwhelmed, and I had no idea where it was going. But I could think I now I do. Like now I kind of know that it's gonna go somewhere at least, and like all these characters are getting involved. But it's interesting. But I do have to call you out, Drew, because I looked it up and I, it's not by the same uh, studio that made Dara Ra. Damn. Ooh. Well, I didn't know if they were the same studio, <laughs> but I think it's the same uh, the same author because they have like a hybrid manga with both of them in it. Right. I did see that. But yeah, definitely not the same studio. The studio that does this is Satelite, and they did like all the Macross series and uh, Log Horizon. Prob Macross. Oh, yeah. Satellite. Satellite. Oh, they do. They do a lot of that CG stuff. Is there CG in this? No, no, not really. It's it's all 2D. At least there, that I've come from. Is there um, random music like song sung? Oh, yeah. That yeah, goes through. For yeah, sure. Okay. That's sure. satellite does that, yeah. Like all over. Oh, they also stuff. did fairy tale too. So yeah. if you're into that, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting, to say the least. I think uh, I think I may watch a couple more episodes and then kind of have a final verdict after that. But we'll see. So nice. uh, yeah, nice. I mean, anything nice. else, uh, Alec? You you started saying something about Yuru Camp or laid back camp. I just said it's it's fun to eat. While watching that, it's one of those shows you should eat while watching because they always have food. Oh, I I always yeah. watch it while I'm eating because <clears throat> it's like that anime about cooking. Shokugeki no Soma. No, no the <laughs> not the the one where they're learning to cook. The daughter and the dad. Sweetness and lightning. Oh, sweetness. Yeah, and lightning, sweetness yeah. and lightning. Yeah, you gotta eat during that. You gotta eat during laid back camp because they're always cooking good food. Yep. Uh, yeah, I always it. watch that while I'm <laughs> while I'm eating lunch at work. <laughs> Probably a good good time to do it. <laughs> it's just so relaxing. It's like just sitting there that's, eating lunch. And that's what you use slice of life for, though. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's just there to just kind of you Fill can time. shut your mind off and kind of just be there in the atmosphere. I guess. I don't like black yeah, clover. Forget that I'm at work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly uh, shutting your mind <laughs> off, but you can shut your mind off if you want to. <laughs> Ali can do it. <laughs> he does it yeah. all the time. I'm a genius at shutting my mind off. You guys <laughs> hey. don't even know. Hey. <laughs> all right, so uh, that'll that'll conclude our happy hour then. So let's let's go on to some closing times. Uh, I have some some news that I just caught off of uh, you know like Anime News Network and uh, Crunchyroll is 
actually releasing the Sword Art Online movie, The Ordinal Scale. Ordinal Scale. Scare. Scare. Scare? Uh, I don't know. I, so I actually only watched the first season of Sword Art Online, and I <clears throat> had heard that this movie was released, and it was supposed to be really good, but uh, I actually don't know anything about it. I just I saw that it was... I seen this one yet. So uh, I just saw that know. this was like big news. So it's available big on uh, iTunes and uh, Amazon it's on Video. iTunes? Yeah, wow. It's on iTunes. That makes things real easy. Yeah, right? Yeah, That's you just have to purchase big. it. Yeah, but... You know, I mean, that's pretty yeah. big that it's on iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess it was out in theaters, the last one. Right. Or is this the one that was in theaters? This is the one that was in this theaters. This is the one. Oh, I mean, yeah. Okay. That makes sense then. Yeah. So uh, Crunchyroll also added some uh, new series this past week. Uh, Darker Than Black 2, which is also a very good uh, shonen type st- uh, series that it, I really enjoy. And I was I was hoping that they would do a season three. But I don't think they will anytime soon. We'll see. Uh, also, Steins Gate is back on Crunchyroll. I believe Darker Woo! Than Black was also on Crunchyroll previously. It was, huh? Yeah. Let's see, that's interesting. Yeah, what are they doing? They... Well, I mean, they, they're going they back have to the con- good ones. So, like before, they had to negotiate terms with the studios on simulcasts. So, they had a certain contract for how long they could have the shows on their site. And so a long, like years ago, you could watch a show, but you had to make sure you finished the series before it was taken off the site. But now I think they've kind of done exclusivity, not exclusivity rights, but the ability to have anyone stream their stuff on their, yeah, it's like VOD kind of Mm -hmm. service. Interesting. That's smarter for the for the um fuck studios <clears throat> for or for the studios or whatever. Yeah. yeah for the studios makes more sense yeah because they like will Spotify. continually get revenue I'm assuming mm-hmm. is what's negotiated into their contracts mm-hmm. yeah I mean it really makes sense it's... with how big Crunchyroll is you'd be dumb to not allow them to have shows like Steins Gate yeah. on there for as long as possible because I literally just this week recommended steins gate to somebody especially (laughs) yeah (laughs) especially with steins gate uh, zero coming out uh, i believe Mm. next season so yeah it's sometime Mm -hmm. this year right is it this coming season or i think it's yeah i'll have to look into that then but yeah i know it's coming out sometime this this year i thought it was like during summertime sometime but I'm i'm not too sure summertime 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 Cool. Um, and then the so last bit of news, uh, DV Dragon Ball Fighters has uh, sold and shipped out two million copies already. Wow. Which how is, many? Uh, wow. How many titles has uh, Capcom shipped out with it? Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Far less. Less than five hundred thousand. Yeah, far less than that. <laughs> I mean, it's a good game, man. I don't know if you guys I'm probably going to get DBZ, DB Fighter Z, actually. I, haven't I don't like fighter yet. games, but I loved the Dragon Ball Z fighting games Budokai. that came out Budokai. on PlayStation 2. Budokai, yeah, I played all of them. If people play it, I will get it. I will get it if people play it. I already got it, man. It's fun. I'll get it. Yeah. I'm like halfway through the story. It's, let's get it. Okay, well, pretty, I mean, uh, it's pretty tricky. If people I'm going to be will bad, play, but let's get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I will right. get it. I'm yeah, real bad. I'm not very good. <laughs> I'm but I got it. I'm just gonna so tell what? you guys right now. Either. I'm so bad at fighting games. <laughs> it's so bad. As long yeah, as but as long uh, as it's not like a type of deal where someone's getting destroyed absolutely like a double lift was on his stream. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that was that was hard to watch. I, I felt for him. I, felt so I mean, I mean you guys are gonna get destroyed because I just spam buttons faster than you. That's <laughs> No, all you're gonna do is you're gonna auto combo the whole time. <laughs> auto combo i'm just gonna use c stick like an n64 or gamecube the c stick the n64 c the... stick no the, the <laughs> gamecube the game New dude tech. you guys the... don't even know you don't even know you i was like so an the N64 N64. Controller. <laughs> dude i i hacked the, i hacked the n64 and i got Holy the c stick no it was super <laughs> smash bros gamecube c stick man all you do you just click up up and left up and left and everyone dies <laughs> Alec yeah, was the type of player in Melee that just played Pikachu and he just kept sma- um, down smashing around Pika when people Thunder. would come in. 
<laughs> no, there was a time there was a time when I played fighter games a lot and my so well by fighter games, I say uh Super Smash Bros. Melee was my fighter game and I played Marth uh was my main character, the only person I played, and I was pretty badass at Marth, and then I stopped playing, and now I don't like fighter games. I don't know why. I'm just <laughs> bad at that. I would always play Ike in uh in Smash. Brawl. I would have crushed you. In Brawl, yes. I would have crushed you. Oh, in Brawl? Never mind. Sorry, Mar- Mark. You. He didn't play Brawl, so... <laughs> I didn't play Brawl, so... You didn't play that Shut game. fuck up. Oh, sorry. Get out. <laughs> you can wait till the next one's released yeah. in, like, five years. No, later this year. <laughs> later this year. Yeah, Ninten- Later this year. <clears throat> Nintendo Switch will just, you know, have it. <laughs> yeah. They're going to have a, a port yeah. Hopefully. of Brawl. <laughs> Hopefully. I hope so. You can play it with a Labo. Mm. <laughs> Stupid. You can, man. You can play anything with Labo. You can just build it out of cardboard. <laughs> well, anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I actually saw a meme about that, but I'm not going to go. Never mind. Ignore that. It was right. dirty. We'll ignore your <laughs> meme. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think that's gonna wrap it up for us today, right? Uh, any any uh, last last bit of information from you guys? Anything you want to pitch in? No, it's bedtime. Bedtime Whoa, for Drew. Someone's oh, someone's a little sleepy. I'm sleepy. But we got the speaking sleepies. speaking of other news, what about our Overwatch tradition? No, I'm well, sleepy. <laughs> I've been up for like fucking twenty six hours. Yeah, he's been up. <laughs> that's not he's, that long. He's been up for five hours. Um, the the other news <laughs> is uh, the. Super Bowl happened in the Americas, as in the oh, United right. States. In the Americas, and uh, the bowl that is super. if you're if you're a fan of the the sports ball, uh, the New sports England ball. Patriots did not win their sixth Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert! They they sixth lost in a row. <laughs> yeah, they lost to the Philadelphia Eagles, who won their first with a backup quarterback. So. And it's good because after last year they needed to lose like yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's oh just my God. really satisfying knowing that you know the Patriots <laughs> lost, <laughs> <laughs> and that I can hopefully see Tom Brady crying or something. That'd be great. Yeah, and then he's gonna kiss his son. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Worse than Ethan. All right. Ethan. So. Ethan. Yeah, no. Ethan. So um, no. check us out on WordPress. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can find us on uh, WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. We are also on the Twitters and Instagram and Facebook. Just search. Our Instagram is active draft. now because I'm not doing it anymore. Ooh. Yes. Thank Mark for that. I've taken up the mantle. He got, of he got all the followers for us. Thank you for following. We have a really we have guys. So we we found ourselves a really really great social media manager. Oh. He's doing an excellent job. He's he's getting us like just publicity likes. all over the place. We're getting likes, likes. Getting follows. Likes. He's posting stuff about the beers on the Instagram. It's excellent. It's excellent. It's guys. almost like Please, he's round used of those applause. services. There we go. Ethan. It's like I have. It's almost like he's yeah. always used them throughout his life. <laughs> you know, being a millennial and all, it's uh, yeah, it's like second yeah. nature. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's yeah, born so with a phone in his hand. <laughs> please follow us on beep, Twitter, beep, beep, beep. Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we will be updating that, you know, a few times a week. We'll we'll always have, you know, a post saying when we recorded and what beer to look out for that we're that we're um, showcasing for the week. That way you can listen and drink along with us. Drink and also uh, we'll have a uh, some uh, social media posts. Exactly. Yeah, yes, if you're 21 and over. Thank you. Alec. Based off of your legal well, drinking rights in your country. In your country. A yeah. <laughs> of we get a lot of uh, international listeners, do we? Yeah, we do. Yes, yeah. Well, that's yes, cool. We well, uh, well, let us know. Let us know how it is over there, and uh, whether or not you're you're able to find these beers. That's also another thing I'd be interested in knowing. But yeah, uh, yeah. might be hard. Yeah, uh, you can uh, listen to us on SoundCloud. We get on iTunes and the YouTubes, which we'll be posting videos, and uh, you can always check us out there and listen along. So uh, thank you for tuning in with us and uh, hanging out with the crew. Mm. I think that's going to be it. Mark's first episode. Mark's first episode. Everyone go to sleep. Exciting. Success. Success. All right, let's cut this out before Drew just starts screaming. Jeez. Okay, bye. (laughs) Okay.